This is the PIX11 Morning News with Sukanya Krishnan and Corey Chambers. It is 7-11 and tensions keep rising between Reverend Al Sharpton and the police unions over the death of Eric Garner and that <coughs> chokehold that was caught on tape. Sharpton plans a march across the Verrazano Bridge and the unions are threatening a work slowdown. That's what Reverend Al Sharpton alleges. So let's talk more about this. And joining us now our former NYPD detective Wally Zines and president of the Sergeant's Benevolent Associate Association, excuse me, Sergeant Ed Mullins. Thank you both for joining us. So, uh, Sergeant Mullins, you were at the press conference, which Reverend Al Sharpton says and alleges that the PD is going to do a slowdown. Your reaction to that? Completely false. Completely false. What was said at the press conference was for cops and supervisors to do their job and follow the rule book to a T, but what wasn't put out in public was the final statement to that sentence was go home safe. And the objective was that if you follow the rules and you do what the department mandates you to do, then your likelihood of getting yourself in a situation for discipline or indictment would then be on the blame of the department and not on the individual itself. You're following their rule book. And completing your job, you know, from A to Z would um, cover all the bases of what you're supposed to do but before you can follow, move to the next But one. wouldn't following the rule book delay response time because now you're following it to the T because you're living in fear as an officer of well, an indictment? It, it, the possibility of it is it could. Uh, but what we have today is we have sergeants on patrol, officers on patrol who are picking up multiple jobs while they are assigned to one job. You call the police, they're on their way to your house, and something else comes over the radio, they pick that job up too. So are you getting that delay to your house as they're picking this job up, or is the other person getting that delay? Because they don't want to go on radio backlog. And that's the whole thing. They want to keep their response times close. But the bottom line is New Yorkers want to feel safe. And when they hear the PD and the unions coming out and saying things like this, it makes New Yorkers scared. If the police don't feel safe, how are New Yorkers supposed to feel safe? We now are under threat of constant indictment, constant scrutiny. We're seeing all these videos sent in of uh, individuals being arrested. Why are these people not sending in videos of crimes being committed in their neighborhood? Why are we not filming corners where uh, drug dealers are, are um, doing their business on a daily basis? Why are we not getting the public to send in videos of crime that's occurring? It's only of the police? Uh, that's a valid question that you're asking, and I'm sure that people need to be putting that in the back of their head, too, if they do see a crime, and they do. Like we see that in subway people crimes, people crimes. do 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 that. Right. They see perpetrators. They do take. But we don't see that them. all over the media every day of the week. We, we do don't see, do that, Ed. We see it sometimes, but there's crime every day. We got millions of people coming through this city, and almost everyone has a smartphone. But we don't see that happen. We don't see the local merchant and a local resident videotaping the drug dealers and putting that out on TV. We don't see that happening. Probably living in fear, a lot of them and do. Like, like, likely to be true. All right, let's talk about this too, because I can hear it. You're passionate about what's going on here, and we feel it as residents living in New York City. Sure. It seems to be a, a battle, a personal battle between you, Pat Lynch, uh, who's the president of the PBA, and Al Sharpton. What's going on here? Because a lot of people want really seeing leaders not attack each other, but coming together. Why has it gotten to this point? Well, it's gone to this point uh, mainly because. Uh, Al Sharpton isn't allowing the judicial system to run its course. He's wanting protests. He wants the feds to come in. He's discrediting the Staten Island DA's office. We're being accused of locking up Ramsey Order uh, and, and following him. Well, no one said he's had two previous gun arrests. I guess we planted them on him years back. We, well, we didn't his, bring that up. Well, his, his, his wife was on the show yesterday, and she does feel that her husband is being targeted by the NYPD. In fact, I want you to, to respond to her. We're going to play a tape of her and what she said yesterday regarding the NYPD. If you look at the timing, right after they rule it a homicide, they allegedly find him with a weapon, which he wasn't found in possession of. This other person was. But yet they're still charging him with possession. He's saying that he's being followed <clears throat> by the NYPD, that the NYPD is harassing, that the NYPD Definitely. since since the release of this video has been on his tail. Oh yes. I think that's four o'clock in the morning I have we're laying down and my whole room lights up. And I'm like, What what is that? And we look out the window, it's a police car. He told me, he said when they arrested him, they said, uh huh, they laughed at him, basically isn't karma. All right, your response to that. Go ahead, Wally. Well, first of all, in relationship to what she's saying, 
uh, one of the things she mentioned was that he took a lot of pleas in the arrest that he had. And when you take a plea, that you're admitting that you're guilty of the crime that they're charging you with. And in this particular situation, um, she, she, the police are doing exactly what they have to do. They're doing their job. And it's just, it's outrageous. But a lot of people feel that, you know, that Mr. Orta, uh, the NYPD, is tailing him because they're trying to discredit Here, him. Here's what way. happened Are they at trying that to discredit scene. him? Go ahead. No, here's what happened at that scene. Narcotics was doing an observation at a drug-prone location. The female, in this case, was observed with another male. The other male left. Order shows up. The female and him get together. She jumps in his car. They drive to another location. There's 119 complaints for narcotics and all kinds of criminal activity at it. They both go into the location. He comes out with the firearm. When he sees the officers approaching, he sticks it in her waistband. There is a confession and there is a videotape to this incident occurring. So once so again, this is the NYPD tailing Mr. Orta in any which no, way no, to No, the NYPD was him. responding to what is a known location of narcotics and criminal activity. Didn't Look, happen that way. All right. Commissioner Bratton has come out and also said from top to bottom he wants a review of Mr. Gardner's death. And he has come out and said it. And it seems like Bratton is willing to accept in some way that something went wrong, but why haven't the unions come out and said something went wrong? I mean, we have a man who died, and I think the people just want to hear an acknowledgement of that from the police unions. Well, no one's not acknowledged it. You know, it's an unintentional death. There's a big difference. There's a difference between going out and committing murder and an unintentional death. The designation by the ME's office of homicide purely indicates a cause of death. It just means that it died of an unnatural cause, not assigning blame. The assumption is that there's blame assigned to it. But they did say chokehold, and the ME, the mayor said... Which is said unprecedented for the ME's office to put that out, and we still have not received the ME report. There's no toxicology back right now. What are we going to find out if there's all kinds of narcotics but when the mayor, But when the mayor comes out and says the ME's report is a gold standard, it's almost like saying that is an acknowledgement that Look, this the is MEs, The mayor valid. is not a doctor, and many ME's reports... Okay, as in many criminal labs, mm -hmm. their uh, um, so, uh, studies have been discredited. Okay, the mayor is being very disingenuous right now. Can, so you're feeling that the mayor is not backing up the NYPD? Is that what you're I saying? I feel that the mayor is trying to play both sides of the fence when he should be sitting back saying, that, that let the investigation take its course. Dan Donovan's office in Staten Island has a reputation for arresting cops. Mm -hmm. Let the investigation take its course. His comments yesterday about this is typical union rhetoric that you hear is, is really ironic for him to say when he goes out and seeks labor endorsements when he's running for office and he stands side by side with labor. It's contradictory to what he, he well, so labor is rhetoric when you want it to be, but when they say that you should be mayor, that's okay, it's wrong. And what people forget is that every incident that occurs in the city of New York and the police are called, there's a firearm present. When someone goes to resist arrest, there's a firearm at that scene because the police are carrying the firearm. So it could range anywhere from a punch in the mouth to an individual taking the firearm away from the officer and killing him with it, as has happened with Irma Lozada years back. The same thing occurs. There's always a gun present. Our job is to subdue the individual as quickly as possible so no one gets hurt. But sometimes people do, including the police. Let's talk about this. And final answer, please. You know, I think everybody wants to resolve the tension. Uh, needs to be done. It, it needs to be done. It it's be done. palatable. It almost feels like one thing, and it could spark something yeah. bigger. And we've been there before. Yeah. Crown Heights, Washington Heights, we don't want right. to go back there. How can we come to the table and find, kind of resolve this and help the community understand that the NYPD is there to help them and the community to help the NYPD. Two key things are, are valuable to that. It's education, and I think we need to, to utilize sports. We need to you know, incorporate sports into education between the community and the police. And the individual that we sat with here the other day, Kristen Foy, I had a great conversation with him. He was factual, understood, and we were able to communicate. We need people like him to represent the minority community and work together. That's yeah. what we need to do. You, we all need Credible to work together. Right. And a dialogue. You must have a dialogue going where everyone has a say. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Right, and I thank you for joining here, uh, joining us here, and having this conversation because this conversation needs to be had. I know the viewers have lots of questions, and I'm sure that my Twitter is going to go off. But uh, we're going to continue this. The Reverend Al Sharpton is also planning a march across the Verrazano Bridge. This is on Saturday, August 23rd, to protest the death of Eric Garner. We'll keep you posted and keep a close eye on this, and in the weeks leading up to this march. Time right now is 7:21.